back, Flair community. Today, we're going to talk about how you can connect to the Songbird Network, which was recently just launched. Now, the Songbird Network is currently in observation mode, and you can really expect it to gain traction after the 27th, when the observation mode will potentially end. So let's jump into the content. So I really want to bring your attention to this guy here, Stedas. He's an absolute legend in the space. He's been creating extremely aesthetic infographics for not just the Flare and Songbird networks, but for the XRP ledger as well and on behalf of the XRP community. He's been doing this for as long as I can remember. And if you're not already following, I definitely would recommend it. So let's jump into this first infographic here. So as I just said, Songbird is currently in observation mode. So what does this mean? Observation mode is intended to allow exchanges, uh, time series Oracle data providers and developers to deploy on the network in a safe manner. If the network and time series Oracle smart contracts prove stable, then observation mode will end on the 27th of September. And that's the important date. So just briefly, what is Songbird? It's the Canary network for the Flare network. A Canary network is an operational blockchain with a defined and hence scarce token supply that is intended to be used to test features for a related mainnet, the Flare network. After sufficient testing of the F asset contracts, Flare will be launched and Songbird will become the testing ground for governance based changes on Flare. So as we know, the Songbird network is going to hold real value. It's going to be its own layer one solution. And as we can see here, once the Flare network launches, it will become a decentralized autonomous organization. And the holders of the Spark token will be able to vote to implement various changes. And these changes will first be implemented on Songbird to be tested before being brought over to the Flare network. Moving on, how to check your Songbird balance claim ratio. Now you can go to XRP scan and you have to input a non-custodial XRP address. And that means an address which you own, not an exchange address because exchanges, they hold many people's assets. Okay, so you will get an inaccurate representation of your Spark allowance. So let's just quickly look over here at um, an example. Now, this is not my wallet. I just randomly clicked it. I have no idea whose it is, um, but you can click this tab here, FLIR, and it will basically show you what um, your ratios are, you know? So snapshot balance, 20 XRP. Um, the Spark claim would be uh, 20.146 Spark and also 3.022 songbird now this one's not registered I, as i said i just clicked this at random um but yeah very easy to see if you guys are interested in that so let's talk about the flare launch briefly flare will launch after substantial testing of all systems on songbird with the current final security audit scheduled to finish at the end of september so there's no way that the Flow Network is going to launch before the audits are complete. And these are expected to be completed in the end of September. Now, the testing of the Songbird Network is somewhat vague. It's, it's hard to put a defined time on how long it takes to thoroughly test something. So don't worry about the Flare Network. I'm sure the Songbird Network will keep you preoccupied until that time comes. So let's move on to accessing your tokens. If you claimed through self-custody, for example, a Ledger Nano, a Decent wallet, or any other wallet which you own the keys to, you will be able to access the Songbird network once a public RPC is set up. And you know, there is actually one set up right now. So some of you may be familiar with uh, Tuo Labs, and they actually developed the Ledger uh, applications for both Songbird and also the Flare network. Now, they do have um, an RPC set up themselves. So if you click this link here, you'll be brought, brought over to um, another tutorial site, which I will link in the description. And this basically goes on to um, 
go through what we're going to go through but um yeah as you can see here this is the rpc and the the rpc is basically just a node which allows you to um connect to the network and various ftso data providers are going to be um having these rpc links for you to use so with that being said let's jump back to the infographic Flare expects several external parties to set up public RPCs in the coming days, as I just mentioned. You will receive Songbird tokens to the Ethereum address that you used as a message key. Now, I'm not going to reread this uh, because I made a full video on it yesterday, and I would highly recommend that if you're if you're still struggling with the concept of where your Spark tokens are going to arrive, um, be sure to watch that video. But to summarize. Your Songbird and Spark tokens are going to exist on the Songbird and Flare network respectively. They're not going to land in your Ethereum address. They're not going to land in your XRP address because they are separate networks. And just like you can't put Bitcoin onto Ethereum, you can't put Spark onto Ethereum or Songbird onto Ethereum. So be sure to check out that video if you haven't already. So how much Songbird do you actually get? Well, Songbird will be distributed only once to all the recipients of the Spark distribution. For every one XRP held at the time of the snapshot, 0.1511 Songbird will be allocated. So here we have the supporting wallets. We have Ledger, um, which is a hardware wallet. We have the Bifrost wallet, which is a software wallet, just basically on your phone, and that will be free. And you have the Decent wallet here, which is a biometric hardware wallet. And for those interested, I do have a $50 off link for the Decent wallet below. We also have Metamask, which is a Web3 browser wallet, and finally Exodus. Now, this is also important to note for those who are thinking that the network has launched and that's it. No, Flare reserves the right to roll back and or take down the network and restart from Genesis, meaning the very start. Exchanges are strongly advised to not make Songbird token available for sale. So with that being said, we're going to look at how you can connect your self-custody wallet to the Songbird network. Now, this particular infographic is running through the process for a Ledger device, but you can do this with any device which you can hook up to MetaMask. So with that being said, for this particular walkthrough, there are going to be a couple of pre-request ease. So if you're going to do this with a Ledger device, you're going to need a Ledger device, obviously. Um, you're going to have it set up with all like the pin code and Ledger Live installed and all that good stuff, all the firmware up to date. And you're also going to need the MetaMask browser extension. So for those of you who are wondering, this is MetaMask. Um, it's a web-based wallet and it basically allows you to connect to various applications on the internet and you're also able to link different accounts. So if you have a ledger, you're able to link it to MetaMask and I'm pretty sure you can do this with various other wallets too. So the next thing that you're going to need to do is install the Songbird app and this is on um, Ledger Live. Now, I am aware that some people are unable to find it and I'm not sure if it's region locked or something like that, but just be patient. I'm sure the Songbird app will be available to you all soon and it's not exactly like you can really um, use it at the minute, only to view your assets. So once you've gone through all of these pre-requesties, the next step is to open the MetaMask browser extension in Chrome. And as I said, you can find that at metamask.io and you can install the extension and you can click onto the icon here and you can log in basically. Very simple. The next thing you can do is click onto the Ethereum mainnet button and choose custom RPC in the network dropdown. And this is what we was talking about. The, the RPC allows you to connect to the Songbird network itself. So once you actually have it open and you're ready to create a custom RPC, you've got to enter these specific details here. We've got the network name, Songbird. We have the RPC URL, which is songbird.20labs.com forward slash RPC. The chain ID 19, symbol SGB, block explorer, songbird-explorer.flare.network and just click save. 
So now we have added the custom RPC and you should see it available in the networks. Simply click the Songbird network, connect and unlock your Ledger device. Open the Songbird app or the Ethereum app on your Ledger device. Click your account image at the top right here and enable Ledger Live by clicking Settings, Advance, Use Ledger Live. Then you will have to click your image in MetaMask and connect hardware wallet. Select your ledger and click continue. And that's basically it. So after you've completed all of these steps, you should have the ability to view your assets on the Songbird network. And it's as simple as that. And as I mentioned before, you can go through a similar process with wallets which are able to connect to MetaMask. So that's basically the tutorial today. I would like to give a big thank you to Dario, um, also known as Stedas, and you can find him on Twitter. Highly recommended. So yeah, that's it, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week, and until next time, I'm out. For mission control, we have liftoff.